Alright guys, how's it going back again today? Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And just a couple of days after Doug managed to drop Gamer Word 1 on stream the other day and then subsequently apologise, he's gone even further last night and dropped another Gamer Word on the same map combination. What's going on with Doug lately? How long is the apology video going to be this time? Does he need a slur counter on his stream rather than a cheater counter? Lots to get into today. Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Now, first of all, we have to talk about this FaZe Clan stuff because this is a big talking point of yesterday that FaZe Clan are, well, probably under new ownership. They went public with this definitely highly inflated billion dollar-ish valuation. Their company is now valued at maybe $16 million, which is, well, let's be honest, less than a CDL spot. Now, I'm not sure they technically even own that CDL spot because if you guys are aware of what goes on with FaZe, it's Atlanta Esports Ventures, an entirely separate group that owns the FaZe clan spot, well, owns the Atlanta FaZe spot, and they license the FaZe name from FaZe. So FaZe actually make a bit of money in that transaction. So what the future is of the Call of Duty team is unknown, especially if the CDL does come to a close, CWL comes back. But effectively, GSQ Holdings, who own Complexity, are buying this, right? And there's already been quotes coming out about the decisions they're making. It's already effectively a done deal, it seems, and will be solidified in Q4 of this year. So it's going to take a bit of time. But yeah, Complexity will be under the same ownership as FaZe now, it seems, in the near future. You know, just absolute rife mismanagement of FaZe over the last several years. And of course, you can put some blame on the original founders for actually selling it the way they did. But, you know, whatever. This is how it tends to go in companies. And obviously, it's not been managed well from the top either. So FaZe, complete disaster. What happens to their stock? I'm guessing it's going to get delisted. Well, it's going to get delisted anyway because it's uh, below the threshold price on the NASDAQ of $1. So, you know, it's an absolute shambles, really. But what this means for the brand and for the team is actually really rather interesting, right? We've got Banks is going to be back as CEO. Now, whether you consider this to be like an honorary CEO position, if you think Banks is going to be actually doing anything in the same way that, you know, Temper and Apex are going to return as the president and COO, respectively. So, um, you know, whether they're really going to be doing what they used to do, whether there's other people really making the decisions, maybe that's more likely. But it's definitely interesting to think about what happens in the future, especially in other esports, because Let's not forget, you know, FaZe, Complexity, Optic, Envy. Those are four of the biggest brands in COD history. Now, they're under two headers, really, because Optic and Envy are under the same thing. And Envy has effectively disappeared, right? Because when they did that merger, pretty much, they just decided, all right everything Envy becomes Optic. And that's probably for the betterment of the business. But I just wonder what they think about that with FaZe. Like, you know, FaZe have a CSGO team or CS2 team, I keep saying it wrong. Like, one of because Complexity also have a Counter-Strike team. So, probably, I mean, the FaZe team is better than the Complexity team. So, probably the Complexity team goes. But will FaZe be rebranded as Complexity? Or will they decide to can Complexity and use the FaZe brand? Because especially in Call of Duty, let's say we do go back to a CWL style thing, there's no way you want to get rid of FaZe, you know what I mean? Like, There's no way that the ownership is going to be like, yeah, well, FaZe, we're going to kill that brand. Because what's the point? What's the point of buying the brand just to kill it? So, yeah, I don't know. Like, I like Complexity as a brand, obviously a legendary Call of Duty brand team organization name as well. But surely they're buying FaZe's uh, brand to actually use it for something. And of course, these guys getting involved as well, probably trying to get FaZe back where they could be. Because, I mean, let's be honest, FaZe is such still a massive household name in the space their company just doesn't work as a business right now basically it just loses more money than it makes like hand over fist so lots potentially to happen there in the future a quick note as well a few of you guys pointed this out to me that rambo ray here on his instagram story says new office view with the trident or whatever so seattle surge but this screenshot or this picture is not from seattle this is the bc place which is like a kind of all-purpose stadium in vancouver so you know is this stadium at the same stadium as in this picture from Rambo Ray. I'm pretty sure that it is. And if you really wanted to, you could go full geodetective mode and figure out to write the stadiums here, this building's here, this is here, and probably figure out exactly where Rambo's office is. But um, nonetheless, the point still stands that he's in Vancouver, and that's where probably they're going to be based for the new season, which, sure, that's fine. The Seattle Surge moving to Vancouver, just like their Overwatch League team, the Vancouver Titans. 
But honestly, these guys, like, already their team, in my opinion, is a little bit questionable on top of the fact that I just can't imagine the internet situation is going to be good. Even legendary teams like Los Angeles Thieves over the last couple of years, despite being generally really good on LAN, they struggled online playing out of LA. And it's the same with other players that have played out of there before. Playing from Vancouver... It's an entirely different ballpark in terms of what the internet's going to look like when you're playing Texas teams on servers that are probably going to favor the Texas teams. So, yeah, might not be easy, but definitely pretty much confirming that relocation is indeed happening. This was also a big one. I did wonder when Heretics would decide on this because they've confirmed their roster, right? We know what their team is, but someone's got to start on the bench. And I thought maybe it was going to be Lucky, or maybe I thought it was going to be Eric Boom, or maybe I thought it was even going to be Vickle. To be honest, I didn't think it was going to be Journey, but um, that seems to be what is happening. As he says, he's a free agent going into the NA Challenger season. I wouldn't be massively surprised if this story was to change before the new season gets underway, because you don't really know now, out of those five guys, who's the best four at this title, like what the team should be. I guess they've decided, all right, we're going to go with this four for now. Journey can find a Challenger's team and he can be our substitute player, but... You know, I'm sure that he wants to start at some point, and I think there's a very good chance that he probably will, because let's be honest, if this team is going to make a change at some point, as they might be needing to do, Journey is, you know, the man to get. They'll make a one-man change and they'll sub people out and stuff like that. So definitely a bit surprised that Journey is the one of the five to be stepping out to challenges for now. But as I say, all could change here, and well, that might be their starting roster now. You even never know that when the season starts, you know, wherever it is, December, hopefully, maybe January, then in you know, are we going to, is Journey maybe going to be back by that point? You don't really know, depending on how things go in early scrims, they could make multiple changes here, but the roles are very dynamic on this team to see what they'll decide to do going forward. Now, let's talk about some of this Dog Sent to Martin's Hub. It kind of began here yesterday, and I don't know if Doug saw this and decided to go, like, full rogue mode on, on Twitch. I mean, we'll see it in a second. But JKL says, only six players across both Colin and Halo have won three world championships. We've got the ones in Halo, of course, Snakebite World 2, Frosty, and then Clay, Krim, Karma in Cod. So interesting idea. Now, Aix then replies and says that, because in, in Halo, national championship winners count as world champions. That's kind of how they consider it to be over there. But Aix, of course, thinks, and to be fair, he didn't actually win any of these, a fair play, that the national championships in Call of Duty pre the world championship when it arrived in 2013 should also be considered in the same way now this is kind of like a noah lyles debate right like you know world champions are what the united states but um still from the World Championship in 2013, that was like the official World Championship. It was branded as such. Before then, the biggest tournament of the year was the North America, you know, was the US National Championship, basically. So whether you consider that to be the World Championship, you know, frankly, the team that won that was probably the best team in the world. But it wasn't really branded as such. It wasn't necessarily known to quite be as such. And not everyone could even compete in that tournament anyway. So, you know, it's always going to have a little bit less. And also because the prize money wasn't the same, like 2013 it was actually starting to become serious but I still get the point that um you know the 2008 to 2011 national champions probably should be held in higher regard than they are and Doug is one of those winners now I had to censor one of these names because it's not the best game attack you know, I guess of this guy that won alongside Pluto you know Big T, Sharp, Rabo, Dodgers even Pac-Man's team of course you know Choppy, Moho, Assassin, Legendary Names and then that team with Doug, Mutation, Virus and Vengeance that won Won in 2011 the national championship and Doug is finding out the way. Uh, am I a world champion? Like, you know, am I going to be able to brag about this forever? Can we make this official? He says in the replies. So, then we get to this drop. I could have, when I saw this, I was like, come on, Doug, please. There's no way you're going to drop this again. So, um, Panda says, new cod got to drop, bro. We got to get Doug off MW2 rank. We know that Doug lately is dropping into MW2 ranks, grinding it out, finding cheaters, exposing cheaters, whatever. And some of these guys are getting under his skin. There's no doubt about it. The other day he dropped, um, you know, the F bomb, not the, uh, you know, the other F bomb on stream the other day. And very quickly afterwards, apologize, right? He's very apologetic. And I thought, you know, obviously people are going to always have their different perceptions on this, whether, you know, obviously, you know, as Doug admits, saying these things is not acceptable. 
But as he said, you know, it was a it was a mistake, clearly, and he wanted to apologize and say, look, all I can do is apologize and say, I'm sorry for this, the guy got under my skin, it was a mistake, you know, it, it's not going to happen again, <laughs> I'm going to, you know, move forward from this. And I think, you know, most people are probably like, all right, Doug, like, whatever, we get it, you kind of grew up using that word in MW2 lobbies back in the day, you know, it is what it is. So, you know, then, of course, time moves on, I thought it was probably going to be the end of it, but no, we go again, baby, because uh, here is uh, Doug said to Martin last night on Hotel again. I don't know what it is about this map. MW2 ranked Hotel and uh, I mean you can already see the chat going absolutely wild here. Doug manages to apologise on this one before he's even got the words out. I mean it's uh, it's spectacular as much as it is like what is going on. Hey Sprite backstage for Rossi. What's your Why objective? Why are you stuck in challenges? Okay what's your objective? I'm asking you what your objective is. Why are you, Why are you stuck in challenges? Why are you doing this? Why are you stuck in challenges? Why are you doing this? Don't make it about me. Why are you Should doing this? Ass, yeah, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Dead ass streaming. Shut up. Dead ass streaming. Oh my god. I'm going to get canceled again, dude. I'm literally repeating what this guy said. I am so sorry, guys. This is not what I'm trying to do. I am stooping to their level and I hate myself for it. I am sorry, guys. I am literally cringing at myself, dude. Jesus freaking Christ, man. Why do these guys do this, though? Honestly. Guys, I'm not trying to do this, guys. Yo, no, 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 no. No. So of course this even made it to drama alert right with uh, you know as as uh, I guess Keemstar whoever wrote this up sent us as the M word on stream days after saying the F site's like what is going on man I know people were joking about well you know instead of cheat account put like a slur count in the bottom left or something it's tough to even know to what to say about this to be honest because you know other people like train wrecks and like PewDiePie and stuff and like plenty of others have said this word even worse than this like, on occasions right and um, you know like okay sure they take some heat for a few days everyone eventually forgets and moves on but it's just the fact that he said the you know the word the other day and then he comes up with the apology and then he doubles down it's just comedy honestly now um donny temp to be fair like maybe i shouldn't be the one to judge this stuff comes out and says you get a pass to it but you gotta stop talking and engage up till mw3 and then doug basically says look i'm gonna buy a console and i'm never gonna associate with these cheaters ever again because if i do then it's gonna keep going badly wrong and temp's like look wug you're the man thanks for supporting me don so you know i thought that was quite nice really but and to be fair maybe players like temp and, and others realize right that you know when you're in these game chat settings getting frustrated with the players things happen things like this really shouldn't happen but yeah i don't know doug keeps on going baby you can't seem to stop this guy at the moment and he's still got one more in him so hopefully that's gonna be it for well i mean we'll see won't we whether doug goes again and if he gets the console and just plays on that without talking in game chats Maybe this won't happen again, but yeah, still absolutely remarkable. And I thought this was funny, really, from, you know, unfortunate COD on Twitter putting together this from what was Control Hotel the other day. And then here's Search and Destroy Hotel. So maybe next time there's a Hardpoint Hotel, get ready, boys, because, uh, you know, we might be going stratospheric. So we're going to have to leave it there for today, but very much interested to your thoughts in the comment section below. This, uh, you know, this form from Shots as well keeps cracking me up in the background. But yeah, hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.